Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, we're back. I'm Glitch Cat, and I will be helping out Meg Mac Attack, who is going to be running Quickie World. This is a ROM hack of Super Mario World made by Valdeo, and uh, it's a really good hack to start out with. It's fun, colorful, and has a lot of uh, cool strats in it. And uh, Meg is going to show us how it's. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, I, I kind of want to talk about that just really briefly. That like, um, this is my first Mario World Mario Kaizo ROM hack. This is my first uh, one, and I picked it because it was exactly the right level of difficulty. So, if you um, if you've ever watched one of these and you feel like you can't do them, um, this is a good one to start with. I, I really, honestly believe that. But um, yeah. So I'm I'm gonna get started here. Um, and thank you, uh, Glitch Cat, for being here. Obviously, uh, oh, Glitch Cat is the world record holder for this game, for the record. <laughs> for now. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get started. Um, do I need to count down the timer, actually? You want me to count it down? Yeah, if you could count it down, that would be awesome. All right, I'll say. All right, I'll okay. say three, two, one, go. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. And as with these kinds of hacks, there is always this like intro screen because that's in Mario World. Um, this one doesn't kill you, unlike most hacks. Uh, most of these hacks will kill you if you don't do anything, but this one just lets you like run around for a second. Um, this um, this first level was actually really hard to get down the first time. Um, you really have to learn how jumping works in this game to do this well, um, because you have to um, let go of the jump button to fall slower and faster. Um, and it's a really important technique uh, to doing these hacks. Um, less, little less so in the actual vanilla game. Um, but yeah, this this level is basically all about kind of teaching you how to jump and jump off of things and control your jumps. And um, it took me uh, like a couple of hours to actually get it down the first time. Um, and then this next level um, is a interesting level because you do a little more of that. Oh, I missed that. Um, but it looks a lot cooler. This level is actually um, just a really cool looking level. And you do, um, you have to spin jump in this one a little bit more. Um, and this is actually a really tricky level. Uh, a lot of runs can start out and just have a lot of trouble at um, the second level. This is always very tough. Yeah. And this um, took me a really long time to get right, um, this part with the, the running here. I did it a slower way for a long time. Um, I would actually do all of those jumps without without P-Speed, um, which is the top speed that Mario can run, more or less. Um, and you can do it without P-Speed, um, but the jump at the end where you have to get in behind that that coupling is um, really hard if, you're not, if you don't have P-Speed going into it. Um, so I eventually had to learn the right way to do it. Um, this level's a lot of like jumping off of things um, and through things. Um, this is also the first level where there's kind of a lie in the uh, the the like thing at the beginning says um, you should go quickly through this basically effectively. Um, and there's a lie in there if you get the if you have to go from the checkpoint in that level. Um, you actually have to slow down a whole bunch. Um, you have to wait for that that rocket to go by so you can actually jump on it. So, uh, Meg, do you have a favorite level in this game? Some level that you're just like, once it all kind of worked out itself, you're like, wow, I really love this level. Um, that's a really good question. I think I probably do. I also have some, I, I would say that I more strongly have least favorite levels. Um, and this would actually be one of them. <laughs> um, this next bit right here, this, this little choke point here is actually really mean. And I have lost a lot of runs to, to just not being able to get into that choke point. Um, I was, did really well that time actually. Um, this level actually does look really cool, though, when you when you do it right, um, just because it's all falling, and that's not really an experience that you have like in in Mario World, you know. Like, um, I mean, there's a couple of screens where you fall 
but yeah. Um, this next one is also another like least favorite. <laughs> um, you didn't tell me there was an orb in here. I forgot to get everybody all excited for that. Oh yeah, there are a couple of orbs. I should I should have mentioned that. There is um there's going to be another orb at least. Um, I think two or three actually. Uh, maybe Glitch Cat knows exactly how many there are. There's okay. a few more. Now you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> so to... this part took me so long to figure out what you're supposed to do. Because um, you can go forward from here, but you don't really want to. Uh, you actually have to go back and you have to get that Eerie to come and come along with you. And when I was doing this blind, like I was doing this blind at first, um, and... I had no idea what I was supposed to do until I actually looked at a run and saw what, what people did to get that that eerie back. Um, or as Pooh calls it, the uh, smug ghost, I think. Um, but yeah, you have to you have to do this like jump back thing. Um, I think you're actually intended to do like spin jumps off of the eerie to get back, um, but you don't actually need to. And there's actually a very difficult uh, time save in this level that no one has ever gotten in a run yet, uh, which would be skipping the Eerie and bringing the spring. Uh, and it's literally too tough to even try in a run oh, right now. Oh, wow. I have never seen that. I kind of really want to see that now. You, it's, it's a really complex setup that you skip the Eerie and you have the spring at the final jump, but then yeah. you have to do an off-screen turn back spring drop at the right time, and it's, it's very, very, very tough. Mm. This um this level, the Tower of Power, um, this level took me. This was the first really big barrier level for me. It took me a huge amount of time to get, even to be able to do the timer part at the beginning here. Um, it was it was pretty rough. Um, and I would actually say that it is actually probably one of my favorite levels in it now because it's so um, energetic, and you go through it really really quickly when you do it right. Um, and this, this like tension of the timer adds a lot to it. Um, anything with saw jumps though, actually kind of annoys the hell out of me. <laughs> um, they're, they're pretty mean. Um, so that, that section is actually pretty rough. Yeah, I wasn't sure what that sprite is until you ran into that. What is that exactly? It looks like a platform with a, like a skull and crossbones almost. Um, which one? There oh, was a they're platform. yeah, the skull platforms. I've never seen those before. They're um, they're just death blocks. Um, they're like custom ones added in. They're basically munchers, but um, but reskinned to look more menacing, I guess. Wow, that's pretty cool. Now, lots of different hacks have their own type of death blocks uh they like meg said they usually are just retextured munchers uh some might be skull and crossbones i've uh, used colored cement um you could use anything you want really but the skull and crossbone is a good indicator to the player and then also i had meant to ask orb. you which had oh orb orb had to get that in. <laughs> um I meant to ask you the moving floor in the ghost house that meg was in a couple levels back uh I heard that that's a very tough sprite to use. Primarily, uh, I remember Auth was telling me about that uh, in the creation of the randomizer. Do you want to talk a little bit about using that in the levels? Yeah, that's a um, what's called a layer two scroll. Um, so there, there's a couple different layers of objects. Um, there's layer one where most of the walls and things live. Uh, there's layer three, which uses um, like the, the tide, uh, the water moving for the tide. That's a layer three, um, but those scrolling things, as well as like the yellow sandbars uh, that you'll see, those are on layer two, and um, they can move independently from layer one, and there's a sprite that controls that movement. Um, it either makes them kind of go up and down like that, or makes it sink, um, or if you think about like the skewers in the Wendy castle in regular Mario world, how they go up and down, those are all um, layer two objects. This, um, this overhang jump that I'm doing right now, also really annoys me in an otherwise really fun level. We're about to do some really cool shell jumps. Um, but yeah, these, uh, these, uh, there's a couple spots in this where there's some like really tricky overhang jumps and I hate them a lot. 
Yeah, we actually saw this type of jump in uh, Lost Levels. We have to deal with this in Bowser's Castle, although, Meg, you have a much tighter time frame than I would have in that stage. So, well done on that. You also have a lot more control over Mario in this than I think you do in Lost Levels, though, to be fair. <laughs> Still, well done on that level. Wow, it seemed like once you were over that jump, you were just, you were not letting anything else get you there. Yeah, the shell jumps are a lot of fun and I practice them quite a lot. Um, this level is just ridiculous with all these chucks everywhere. I, I kind of love this level just aesthetically for, for just being all of these chucks everywhere. Oh, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Um... But yeah, this this level is a lot of fun just just for how much you you like mess with these chucks, um, and how much they're messing with you as well. Obviously, I'd like to point out that that jump you did at the beginning, uh, avoiding the first chuck and not even touching it, that's a really tight jump to get. I was pretty impressed by that. I actually have more trouble doing that the like normal way. <laughs> um, there's a couple of things that in this that I, I have more trouble doing the way that I think you're supposed to than than the way that I ended up doing them. Um, one of the shell jumps in the last level, I do off the wrong wall. Like I do it off the wall that it's not that it's not labeled for. Um, so that's kind of a weird thing. But yeah, that chuck, I I learned it that way. That was how I did it. I got so frustrated trying to do it what I perceive as the proper way that I ended up just like giving up and just doing jumping over the first chuck. <laughs> okay, there we go, finally. Um, and this this last bit, um, I spent so long learning how to make the chuck at the end in the gate there um, go up when I needed him to. Like I would stop there and I would try to get him to go up on the time that you need to. And it's a, it's a neat trick and everything. But if you just go fast enough, <laughs> Um, if you just go high enough and fast enough off that last jump, um, it's fine. <laughs> He's just always high enough for you to get under him. Um, the second half of this level is a, a part that I'm, I'm pretty rough at still. Um, the jumps in, in there are really, really precise, uh, for me at least. Um, and this, this first jump I actually is another one that I like did wrong for a long time, although I think it's actually the intended way where you like curve into this. And um, that's one of the overhang jumps that I was talking about. Um, but you, if you just do a spin jump right here, you're, you're totally fine. That may be the first moving checkpoint I've ever seen. Yeah, these sandbars are also on that uh, that layer two that we were talking about earlier, uh, except for these are controlled by the on off switch. Uh, making them go up and down like that. Yeah. Um, and if you actually get through there the first time, it's actually really hard to finish the level compared to when when you uh, if you go from the checkpoint. By the way, um, everything is moving down a lot faster at that point. Um, at least in my experience. Oh, this is probably one of my favorite levels. Um, just, I mean, this kind of level is always really cool. I always enjoy watching these kinds of levels, and it's really cool to do this kind of level. Um, and the music is good. I, I really like um, hacks that like introduce some new music to the game. And this is a very like energetic, fun song. And it's very appropriate to the level. Um, and this next level uh, is took me the longest of literally any level in this game to actually get done um, the first time. Um, the second half of it uh, is extremely hard because it involves some really tricky uh, jumping on um, jumping on a saw. Nice little smiley face there at the end of the level. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, that, that, that ending is kind of a, a trick. It's trying to make you think that you're supposed to do a shell jump there. Um, but actually there's an exit, like a hit exit underneath the level um, that you actually trigger. This is another spot where the, the uh, intro lied. Um, you have to wait there or you won't um, be able to um, jump onto the next platform. So this part is the was the hardest part of the hack for me by far. 
Um, you have to throw these shells up while bouncing off this saw. And you have to do it um, approximately, you have to do the throwing up thing twice, um, plus get onto this, and then go over here, and you have to do this flame thing, um, which is a really awkward move. And here it's really easy to accidentally make the mushroom go backwards, which means um, you either have to get it all the way back again or start over effectively, um, which really sucks. <laughs> wow, great job on that, Meg. What a difficult stage. Yeah, um, and this is the, uh, the end of any percent this level. Um, and it's more riding on saws and doing shell things on saws. Um, we were talking about retextured death blocks earlier. The lava in this section is actually retextured munchers, and otherwise that saw would just sink into it. Um, so it looks like lava, but actually it's just a flat, solid surface that you could stand on. Yeah, it's actually, if, um, if you see me die on it, um, it's actually really clear that that's the case um, because I just die instantly on touching it instead of sinking into it like in um, in that other level with lava. Um, if you die in the lava there, you, you actually sink into it for a little bit. As if it's water, basically. Yeah, you can actually go one block into the lava, that sort of bubbling surface of the lava that you see. Uh, Mario can actually get all the way into that before the game actually registers a, uh, a kill. Orb. 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 And, uh... <laughs> and yeah, that's that's the any percent run, which um, that level was also quite hard to get through, but it was a lot more fun for me than the previous level with the saw. Um, I don't know. It was. It, the moves felt more discreet and more consistent, and learning it was more fun. So I didn't really mind that it took a while. Um, now we're into the 100%, which is a special world. Um, and some of the tricks in here are pretty hard for me still. Um, when I submitted this to Power Up with Pride, I actually hadn't finished a 100% run yet. Or I had, but I had, had like only finished it once or so. Um, there, this level I'm, I'm, I don't find as interesting as the other two um, special world levels, personally. Um, but it's got a really great aesthetic, at least. Um, also, the uh, the um, readme for this hack claims that there are no Kaizo blocks, and I just I just want to point out that that's a lie. That was a really really good level. You did really well with that. Uh, yeah, that was probably my best in the last two days of that level, actually. <laughs> that can be um, a really tough one. Yeah, that, that last se section of it is actually quite hard. Um, this level, uh, we're actually going to skip about half of it. Um, the next two levels, we are actually going to skip half of each of them, which is a bit sad because they're really cool levels in their entirety. Um, I really like the rest of them, um, but they are also considerably harder in their second halves and take a lot longer for me to finish. So um, actually we might be doing this one properly because I missed that. <laughs> Apparently we're doing that one properly. This should be fun because I haven't actually done this in a while. So what we were trying to do was get Yoshi um, to eat I can explain it if you want. Um, yeah. The yeah the attempt was to get Yoshi to eat the rainbow shell that you see, and if Yoshi eats a rainbow shell, uh, Yoshi gets all the powers of the rainbow, flight and sand clouds and fire that he spits out. And so we were talking about retexture death blocks before. Um, in a weird oversight, the retexture death blocks in this area are actually lava that was retextured, and because you can go through the top of the lava. Um, what that means is that you can clip through the corner of these death blocks and the strat is to sort of clip through the corner 
of one of these retextured lava death blocks, and then you're standing on the block below it so you're safe, and you can jump up and then eat the rainbow shell through the barrier there, and that would allow Yoshi to fly under the level. Um, it's a really, really tricky skip to do, and it ruins <laughs> runs all the time. I've actually been going through the level instead of over it. Um, you have enough time to do it. Um, sometimes you don't have enough time to keep Yoshi through it, um, but you can still do it. And um, the way that I hold my controller doesn't really allow me to mash quite quickly enough to do the bottom reliably. Um, I, I end up dying to the, to the bottom of the screen fairly frequently. So I actually just go through the level. Um, you don't lose that much time for going above it. It, it pretty much yeah. runs out to be the same. Yeah, it doesn't, unless you get locked on, you get stuck behind a box or something. <laughs> I have not done this in a while, so that is why I'm struggling a little bit with it. But um, funnily enough, this is actually the section that made me interested in this hack. Oh, wow. Can't believe I'm missing that off block. Um, I think I saw Pooh do this um, this section, and the part with the bouncing the Goomba with Yoshi and then jumping off the Goomba um, just was really cool to me. So it's a really neat trick. Yoshi's sand clouds uh, when he's holding the well a yellow shell, but in this case a rainbow, or well a yellow shell in this section. Um, he stomps those sand clouds, and those sand clouds will pop enemies up like that. So the idea is just to pop it up with the sand cloud and then bounce off it in midair. And that last bit is uh, one last test of your ability to uh, what's called regrab. Um, you have to you have to slow your jump down a lot, or you won't land on that platform. <laughs> um, which uh, yeah is a little bit tricky. It's not super tricky, um, but this level we're going to be skipping about half of it as well, and uh, I am not going to be trying for doing it normally. Um, the second half is really cool looking, but also quite a bit difficult, quite a bit more difficult than just skipping it, and you'll see why. Um, yeah, miss that. This is one of my favorite skips in the game. Um, not not going to quite spoil what it is, but just know that uh, everybody that ran this game did so for a long time without trying this, and I think <laughs> it was because we all just thought it wasn't going to work. And imagine our surprise when one day someone just comes out and goes, oh, you know, you can actually do this strat, uh, but keep watching. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Yeah. Was this palette inspired by Donkey Kong Country Returns? Because this reminds me of uh, the opening factory level where you're playing as a silhouette of the uh, two characters. This is really awesome. Yeah, this level is visually really cool and the music is really neat. Um, I don't know if it was inspired by Donkey Kong Country though. I guess my next question- And here we go, we are skipping half the level. <laughs> You literally just jump onto the ceiling and you just go. We just didn't think we could do that, so we never tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is this is the boss of the game, uh, the hundred percent. Um, unfortunately, I think that this boss is actually a little bit, um, a little bit of a letdown after how cool the rest of this hack is. Um, it's it's pretty much a straightforward King Boo fight. Um, but yeah, and that is time. Nice wow. job. Very well done. Twenty-two, twenty-two. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's that's Quickie World. Um, this is a really, really um, to like cut your teeth on um, with Mario World ROM hacks. Um, I hadn't even played Mario World in like a few years um, when I started doing this. I played a lot of Mario Maker, but that's but not not Mario World. Um, and it's very different from Mario Maker. Just just a warning. If you come from Mario Maker and expect things to be similar in this, it's not. It's, it's really weirdly different. Right down to the controls. Um, yeah, so that's, um, that's this game. Well, thank you very much again, um, Meg, for playing. That was amazing, especially the extra levels. Thank you 
to everybody who donated and everyone who's been supporting towards this incentive again. Uh, again, I'm glad we got to see the extra feed levels, especially uh, that rainbow level. That was pretty awesome looking aesthetically. And uh, again, Glitchcat, thank you so much again for your awesome commentary and insight into this. My pleasure. Oh yeah, and the, the text. If you missed the text, you should you should go look at the VOD and you should go rewatch it because the text of this is, is bizarre and the game men text is, is really strange. And yeah, um, thank you Sky for hosting. Thank you everybody in staff, Ali and Ariel and Seraph and Dork and all of you for, for putting this on. This is I think my third time being in a power up with pride and it's it's awesome every time. So thank you all. We are happy to have you, Megan. Thank you again. This Quickie World was amazing. And so coming up now, we have All Stars All Games with myself, Raikou Rider, Ben SMW, and Lasso42. So if you did like this Mario block, there is way more on the way, and we're looking forward to presenting it. Now time for a few donations here. We have $5 from A Silent Harmony who says, put this to Meg's choice, so long as that choice is not the save-kill-bid-war in Super Metroid. We have $50 from D to the 4th. Just leaves a heart as in love. Thank you very much, D to the 4th. We appreciate that. We have $5 from Pass the Hanky, who says, Hey all, this event is very near and dear to my heart as a queer streamer who loves speedruns. It is the trifecta of perfection for me. So shout out to the runners, the Trevor Project, and everyone supporting this wonderful event. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. $50 from Figgins, who says, For Ariel. Absolutely. A little bit of a heart sign there. Much love for Ariel and these uh, donations. And Bizangles donates $20, no comment, but thank you very much for your donation. And with that, folks, we are going to be doing the handoff for Super Mario All-Stars. Thank you again. My name is Skybills. It has been a pleasure. I will be back later in the weekend as host, and I will see you all on the gaming side. Thank you so much again, and we will be right back. <laughs>